My name's Andy and welcome to the channel Andy's Tech. Now I'm going to do a little quick tutorial video today on overclocking an AMD FX6300 CPU. I picked up this little PC the other day and before I sell it on I'm just going to get a bit more juice out of it uh, so the, the user can get a bit more performance out of the system. Uh, stock this CPU is 3.5 gigahertz and our little overclock today will take the system to 4.3 gigahertz. Now you are going to need two programs for this. You're going to need IDA64 Extreme, which you can download as a free 30 day trial, and CPU-Z, which is also free to download. The motherboard we're using is an ASUS M5A78LM USB 3, and we've got eight gigabytes of DDR3 1600 megahertz in dual channel. Now let's jump straight into this. We're going to close these programs down and jump into the BIOS. To get into the BIOS, you just want to hit F2 or delete, whichever it is in your system. And don't be shy, just hammer, hammer away at it and uh, it, will, it will boot into the BIOS. And there we are. So the first thing you want to do is go to exit and load setup defaults. This will put everything back to standard as it come out of the box. We then want to go to advanced and CPU configuration. We want to make sure advanced clock calibration is disabled. Core C, core C6 state is disabled. Cool and quiet is disabled. And the other ones are disabled, enabled and disabled. They should be that standard anyway. And next we want to go into jumper free configuration and we want to change the CPU overclocking to manual. We want to change the CPU HT reference clock to 233. Like that. You want to change the memory clock speed to the lowest one first. You can then go back and up the memory clock speed if it's stable. PCIe overclocking, you want to leave that. CPU ratio, you want to set to 18.5. Turbo core technology, you want to disable that. Northbridge frequency, leave it alone. CPU over voltage. Now your CPU might differ to mine, but mine was stable at 1.3. You might have to go slightly higher or slightly lower. I'd start at 1.3 and if it doesn't boot to Windows or it crashes on either 65, just increase the voltage to say 125 and etc etc or lower it slightly if you want better thermals and power efficiency. VD DMB, we want to set that to 1.2. Now again, you might be able to go a tiny bit lower or a little bit higher. This actually, I had to go a tiny bit higher to make it stable. Uh, load line calibration, we want to set to zero. We want to leave that on auto, leave that on auto. You can loosen the timing. So we want to loosen that up a bit. And we can go back and overclock the memory later. I won't be overclocking the memory in this video. And that's it. So if we F10 and save and go back to Windows. My capture card didn't work uh, on this system, hence why I'm filming it with a phone. Uh, I did try, uh, so we're going to have recorded it externally and not internally. Um, but that's just one of those things with playing around with these old PCs. And we've booted to Windows. It is stable. So yeah, back into Windows. If you open CPU Z and you should be able to confirm our overclock. There we 
have it, 4.3 gigahertz. With the bus speed, the multiplier, we will ignore drift 27. And then, um, right, so after doing that, you want to run IDA 64 for about an hour. You just open that. Just click this little graph here, and it will just run this test. Click start, and it will run that test. Um, this did pass the test with flying colors. We didn't have any problem. And now 4.3 is an easy, stable overclock. You may be able to go higher, but this video is not going to guarantee that this was just to gain an extra bit of performance from your FX 6300. And if we go into Cinebench uh, quickly, you can see stock, we were getting 841. And with our overclock at 4.3, we were getting 995. So that's a nice little boost on our Cinebench score as well. It's about 17-ish percent, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that. It's roughly about that, 17.5 percent. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Uh, if you've got one of these old AMD chips, uh, it's quite easy to get a bit of bit more power out of it. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like or a comment or leave a dislike if you haven't. Please subscribe to the channel uh, so we can grow together and to see more content like this. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.